If you've ever wasted time dragging things around until they look good, stop. Put the stylus down, take your hand off the mouse, and look at your composition and try and figure out what's wrong with it. This is the first in a series of videos on the principles of layout. And in this lesson, we're going to cover the first three ideas with examples. Just as a musician learns their instruments so they can more effectively share their vision. These principles provide uh, boundaries within which creative expression can happen. They're not designed to limit your creativity, but to provide the opportunity for expression while still allowing you to fulfill the brief. You've probably heard of these and we'll get into some more of the less talked about ideas in later videos, but it's amazing how often these basic principles are ignored, resulting in ineffective or just plain ugly designs. So I'll introduce these three concepts very quickly and then show you how they all work together in tandem with some examples. Number one is focal point, and this is the center of interest, not necessarily the center of the layout, and this is the location to which your eye is drawn. So, for example, here we have a white circle, and it's right in the center of the layout, but if we move this to the side, it's still the focal point. Now, obviously, when you're watching this video, you can see me as well, hello, <laughs> but considering this layout, it brings you over there. Even if we have multiple elements within the layout, we're drawn to the filled circle rather than the stroked ones. It's solid, it has more presence. So that's a focal point. Could also be where things meet. So here, the point at which the two lines intersect is a focal point. And you see this in things like photography. So a well-known principle about focal point is the rule of thirds. And photographers are taught to do this early. So in this image, the bird on the left is placed in the center, its head is placed in the center of the frame vertically and horizontally. Whereas on the right, not only can we see more of the bird, but the composition is more interesting because it is placed along these grid lines so that um, its head or kind of that, that point of weight around the neck is placed in the top third uh, horizontally and the right third uh, vertically and it makes for a more interesting image than the one where it's just in the center and you can apply this to layouts too and we'll see that as all the principles come together at the end but let me give you these quickly number two is white space and this means uh, quiet areas of visual rest which give you other elements room to breathe and we saw this in the photograph of the bird the blurred out background here provides the white space. White space doesn't have to be white, it just has to be a, a quiet area. And that allows us to focus on the part which is sharp and in focus, which is the bird itself. So just as music needs dynamics, that's loud and quiet, layouts need white space. The impact of the orchestra at full volume only works in a room where the acoustics are sufficient that the orchestra can play quietly and softly and uh, we have that different feel and then when they burst into life with an incredibly loud powerful dynamic it has that impact and it's the same with the layout areas of quiet areas of white space allow other elements uh, to come to the fore and it makes them more interesting it makes them easier to navigate around as well. And the third thing before we bring these all together is hierarchy. So this means giving priority to the most important elements. If everything's loud, if everything's on 10, again like music, then nothing is emphasized. When you're mixing a track, you can't just turn up everything louder just makes a wall of noise so some things have to come to the fore like when you're listening to pop music the lead vocals in the fore and some things have to be more to the background a sense of hierarchy and it's the same visually now this is design 101 I appreciate that but how often is this ignored in the real world you want to orient your user that means let them know where they are and then lead them on a journey if you go to a, a map maybe you're walking around a city as a tourist the most important part is you are here. So you, they need to be oriented and be able to get their bearings of where they are, the layout, where north is perhaps, and then where they want to go. And with hierarchy, there's obvious things like headlines tend to be more prominent than body copy. Uh, but let's have a look at some examples. So 
here on this hero section for this website, the dominant element, the focal point is the camera. And let's just annotate this, the camera here. So this is the dominant element. This is the focal point. And then there's plenty of white space around the image, but also around uh, all the copy and such. So it allows you to to uh, to read it. It gives parts of rest within this composition. And the headline here is clearly more prominent than the body copy underneath. And so there's a clear hierarchy to it as well as a clear focal point. So maybe with this next uh, layout, similar with this next website, Again, so this time we don't have just a plain background. The photograph fills the entire background. However, there's still clear areas of white space within this photograph. It's nicely composed so that the cliffs really stand out because the sea and the sky give those uh, white space areas. But then within the quiet areas, there's been space to place the logo, the navigation, the headline and the call to action uh, very clearly. So we see this image, we get this feel, and then we read the headline, and it gives us a sense of the kind of website that we're on uh, straight away. Similarly with this magazine layout, we see first of all the focal point, this big photograph which spans over from the right onto the left page. Um, of this arch and as you're flicking through the magazine this catches your eye as a uh, an eye-catching uh, focal point for this photo essay so it's going to lead you into that so you see the picture and you get a sense of this is going to be something from this American wilderness which it is then the headline it's clearly uh, more dominant than the body copy. And there's also areas of white space. Not every uh, cell within this grid has to be filled. Uh, and that gives chance um, for there just to be more of a sense of rest. And it gives it um, more of a premium, relaxed feel to it as well. Now, we can see this. These are made up examples, okay, that are quickly put together. But you want to train your eye and be so that you are aware of these principles while you're learning and so that when you look at a layout you can see them at work and you can understand uh, why a skilled designer made the decisions that they did. So let's look at some real world examples. So this is the hero section on the Figma homepage. So straight away we see the headline. It's at the top. It, it's big. It's bold. Now I've got a massive 5k screen here so we see quite a lot of the image but uh, maybe on a smaller screen you just see a little bit of the screenshots here at the bottom uh, below the fold but we see the headline and there's plenty of white space around it and things are, are sensibly placed and they're not crowding each other so we get the concept of what Figma is about they're making their unique selling proposition the collaboration aspect so that's very clear at the top uh, and it leads us down through this same with Webflow, very similar. They have a headline with, with Figma, it was black on white. Here with Webflow, it's white on black or very dark. And that's very clear and it's not crowded out by imagery. The site you want without the dev time, their value proposition is very clear and their logo is appropriately uh, small. There's enough clear space between. They make their navigation very simple as well. It's just a login or register so that you are drawn to these key elements and they're able to get across their value proposition before encouraging you to scroll down the page thereby showing you within the app. Now you're probably thinking these are both in the design community of course they're going to have great websites and more importantly they're going to observe just like very basic principles of design but what about the Pantone website? I mean what is going on here? Like I come here and I don't know where to look. There's so much going on. I've got to work. I've got to force myself to, to look around to, to figure things out. What is the focal point here? Perhaps the light booth over on the far right. It could be this. But we've got this type in the center. So that's like in the center at the top. So I'm sort of drawn to that. But then the biggest headline is here. So I'm not really sure. I'm kind of all over the place. And this hero section, uh, which is actually a carousel. So these are rotating. 
which will distract you uh, even more. So I've decided to take a screen grab for you guys. But then below, we've got like a big solid rectangle here. So this is very heavy. And this has got like one, two, 10 images in the thumbnail for this video next to something on a colored background. I mean, this types in all caps and colored up, two things that make type harder to read. Just so much going on. It's close to this now, so it's competing. So if they would just go back to these very basic principles, focal point, hierarchy, white space. If they were observed and Pantone's value proposition and the sense of their brand came across, I mean, this is a brand for designers exclusively. Fashion designers, interior designers, graphic designers. So it needs to look good. It needs to feel good. And Pantone do a really good job with their products and their merch. And that's not coming across in their website. And yes, they have products they need to push and things they need to talk about. But that could be done in an ordered grid layout, step by step throughout the website or through an easily uh, navigable menu. But to arrive here, this as a layout is... Uh, an example of somebody not observing the basics. So those basics, focal point, white space, hierarchy, make sure you bring those into your designs uh, because even as experienced designers, like maybe the guys at Pantone, it's easy to forget. So look out for the next two videos in this series and until next time, happy designing.